Well, it is everything that I expected that it would be and more. Yeah. I had no idea that it would be as long as it is. They had no equipment other than their hands. They had mules and sleds, mules and pans, but still, that's a lot of work lifting each rock and putting it in place. It's really something. I wish everyone in Harris County could see this, but it's a once in a lifetime thing. I doubt that I'll ever get a chance to see it again. Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you with another adventure into history. And on this video, we are exploring the ruins of an old home site that were built by a former slave shortly after the Civil War. And this is actually a super interesting story here. Uh, this fellow was born in the 1820s. Uh, he gained freedom, of course, after the Civil War, and then went on to become one of the most prosperous African Americans in Harris County uh, after emancipation. So on this video, I'm joined by Mr. Dan, the historian, Briley, and Mr. Kyle Shaw, who is uh, our tour guide and taking us through the rough terrain on his side-by-side. -side. Where are we at, Dan? Well, we are on uh, what was known as originally the Dowdell Plantation. Now the Dowdell Plantation, there were, you know, there were brothers that settled here, Lewis and James Dowdell. They moved on years later after the Civil War and uh, they moved into Alabama and went westward. But they left their mark here. This was, uh, you know, there's still a Dowdell's knob up in the park, state park here. And uh, the Dowdell family was very, very well off originally. One of the Dowdell women married a doctor from LaGrange and uh, his last name was Stanley. Well, Dr. Stanley owned the enslaved people that we're talking about today. Uh, there were 50 in number that lived on the Dowdle Place in Harris County. And they were under the care of a Mr. Williams. They're listed on the 1860 uh, federal slave census. The Dowdle family, after the Civil War, sold most of their property off and moved on. But one of the uh, former enslaved people, his name was Oliver Stanley. Well, Oliver Stanley was 40, around 40 years old when the war ended and before he was emancipated. When, uh, after emancipation, he became a registered voter and uh, by 1875 or so, he was purchasing land. And he bought all of that mountainside over there and he bought it from Mr. Dowdle. There was one half of a land lot, which was 100 acres and then he bought a, uh, the other half of the land lot, which was another uh, 100 acres from Mr. Arch, Di uh, Arch Dollar, Archibald Dollar. Mr. Dollar was a merchant down here in uh, uh, close to Dowell's Mill. Well, Mr. Dollar sold him that, and when he combined the two land lots, he actually had to go to Hamilton and borrow the money from Mr. Alexander Copeland, who had a big mercantile company in Hamilton. And within just a few years, Mr. Oliver Stanley had paid off this property and he owned it outright. Well, Mr. Stanley lived until 1924, I believe. His, his last will and testament is, is registered in the Harris County Courthouse. And he divided up this land and a large portion of it is still owned by his descendants. There's some of it that was sold off. There's, there's some that was sold down south, or excuse me, north of here that was divided up and new homes built on it. But anyway, uh, when Mr. Uh, Stanley wound up with this property, I honestly don't know how he managed to make a living on it, but he became the most prosperous black person in Harris County. He was considered the wealthiest. According to the 1883 to 84 tax digest, Mr. Stanley was worth $450, and that included his property and all of his livestock. Well, if you could see this mountaintop that he lived on, you would wonder how in the world did anybody make a living up here. But Mr. Stanley was very industrious. Uh, I believe that maybe during slavery days, he and his family had built this hog pen that we're going to see. Uh, it's always been told that the Stanley family built it, and it's actually on Meadows' property today. And uh, Mr. Louis Meadows, who owned the property, told me once that he had never been there. Uh, Mr. Douglas Martin told me that it existed, and several other people have told me about it, but Mr. Martin told me that he saw it once when he was a young man, but 
it was not in use then, and I think he was born in 1902. So uh, anyway, uh, I was in conversation with a good friend of mine one day, uh, Teresa Baker Shaw, and we were talking about history, and she just happened to mention the rock wall, and I inquired about it, and she said, well, my son Kyle will take you to it. So Kyle has been great to bring us up here on this side-by-side -side today over, over terrain that you and I would have never, ever made it back up in here. I don't, <laughs> What is the closest road to here, Kyle? I mean, uh, the closest road would be Moon Road. And that's how many miles? That's probably about five miles that way. <laughs> and that that is a, a good point to drive at, is to see these home sites in here. And we are just so far in, we're as, we're as close to the middle of nowhere as you can get today out here. We are. And strangely enough, we're right in the middle of Harris County. We're in civilization. Yeah. But yet we're up on this mountain and it's so quiet up here. I mean, it's cloudy today. You can't see as far as I, as I wish you could, but uh, because this is quite a view from up here. But we visited this home site. This home site is a little bit bigger than the other one that we went to. So I'm thinking that this was probably Oliver Stanley's home. If I had to guess, uh, I'd probably say so. I believe so. Uh, we see fly evidence of flowers around here and you know cedar trees and things around this. But uh, the other home site over there had a stockpile of rock nearby that, and I'm thinking that maybe where one of his sons lived. Uh, of course, they were all born back in the 1870s, so they were, you know, they, by 1895 and uh, in 1900, they were all grown by then. Uh, but Mr. Stanley, he's, uh, he's got quite a detailed last will and testament in the Harris County Courthouse, and he, desired in there that he be buried in the family cemetery, which is somewhere around here. We're gonna to have to find out where that is. Uh, and I believe that cemetery was continued to be used up until the 1940s. Um, in his will, he mentioned the, the name of the cemetery, but what did I tell you the name of it was? Uh, it was on Looney's Hill, right? Looney's Hill, that's Looney's right. Hill. So we gotta find out where Looney's Hill is. It could be anywhere around here, all these little hills that we've been over. Uh, but his wife was also buried there and I was able to find her death certificate. And her death certificate lists her place of uh, burial as the Stanley uh, residence, uh, at the Stanley residence. So it had to have been close to one of their homes. Um, there was also in the 1940s a death certificate of one of the Stanleys that said that he was buried at the Stanley family burial ground. So, so another lost cemetery. Yeah. Up here somewhere. Somewhere. So let's take a look at this chimney real quick. These are the remains of what is we figure to be Mr. Oliver Stanley's home here. We had visited another one that we thought might be, but this is much larger and makes much more sense. Yeah, he had nine Mr. children that he raised home. in this house. Nine children? Yeah, he had to have a big house. <laughs> or a big room at least. Dan, uh, look at the shape of this chimney. It's not, it's not just perfectly square on the back like see a lot of them. See the, see the angles. It's round. Yeah. How about that? Right. Never seen one like that. Is that normal? No, that's very unusual. That took some uh, ingenuity. It did. That's someone who knew how to stack rock. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, <clears throat> Well, from what I've told, the, what we're about to see, uh, they had quite a bit of experience stacking rock. Mm -hmm. And then this is, on the other side, there's another chimney pile here. So you can get an idea of how large the house is. And then another chimney pile on the back, probably a, maybe a kitchen. So from there all the way to there. So pretty large house. All the old home site flowers blooming here.
you see those Spanish bayonets yeah. growing out there? It looks like this little road right here went right through where the house was. There's some more rock over there. It's another old chimney, another old home site out here on the side of Oak Mountain, part of the old Stanley land. It's amazing. I mean, we were just talking about this while we were in the side-by-side. -side. It is so hard to believe that one man lived up here, and now we've seen this is the third home site we've yeah. come across. Yeah, back when the Dowdles owned this, they owned uh, a lot of land, but they had a lot of enslaved people. And I'm sure that there were homes all over these hills. I was just and about to ask if you thought that some of these might be left over from slave cabins. I believe they probably are, yeah. And certainly, you know, they would have been lived in on ap afterwards uh, because this is something that would have been planted in the front yard as decoration. You can see them all down through here. See them out here everywhere? Yeah. They've gotten scattered around as the timber company came in and cut the trees. So we've so. reached the end of the line as far as riding on the side-by-side -side goes and now it's hiking to go find the Stanley Hog Pen, the Stanley Rock Wall. And I guess, Dan, if it was built back in slavery days, uh, that would make sense for there to be slave dwellings around it. That's, that's correct. And it would also make sense the reason that uh, Oliver Stanley wanted it. He wanted that piece of land with that wall on it. Yeah. Because he was able to make a living there raising hogs. Look at that. To prevent that gully from getting worse. I don't think the camera does justice. I know it doesn't. Walk. It doesn't. Because it feels like you're leaning straight forward. Now, if they loaded up a hog on a wagon, how'd they get it out from up here? Yeah. <laughs> Surely they had a road. I'm sure that, I would hope they did. Yeah. They had a road that wound around some way. It's, uh, I think we're almost there. We're close. We're close. Well, Dan, we've been doing a lot of hiking recently. We have. This is a heck of a hike. I hope right I can here. continue this. <laughs> oh, that's that's nice to see. Somewhat more flat ground. Not all the way. Somewhat more. This is. I think the camera will do it justice now. This is what we just walked up. You ever got my microphone on, have you? Yeah, it's on. So everybody can hear how I'm breathing. Uh huh. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, so we have found it. The uh, legendary, it really is, rock wall here on the top of Oak Mountain. It's just over there. I'll wait for Dan. Dan, this, other than the historical significance of the story of Oliver Stanley, this rock wall has significance just to you too, right? Well, in that I have always wanted to see it. Yeah. And that my daddy always wanted to see it and he didn't get to. He didn't, didn't get, live to come up here, but wow. What you think, Dan? That was a lot of hard work. Yes, it was. It's hard work gathering up a wheelbarrow full of rocks. I can't imagine. 
So, you know, rock walls are really common in like New England, running through properties, but not so much down here. No. This is evidence of people taking what they had and making the best of it. Now, Absolutely. I'm assuming that down, is there a branch of water down there? I would assume there's probably water right here on the back side. I know it ain't on that other side. Yeah. So they put this wall up here so those hogs could not go any further that way. And they would probably go down to that branch to drink. And I don't know, people used to allow their livestock to roam free, but this wall was put up to keep them corralled. So we've always been told, how far does it go? That's a good question. So it goes a little ways. Now here is a, a gap. I'm sure they had split rails down the sides, maybe. Oh, it just keeps going. Oh, yeah. I didn't, yeah. This reminds me a lot of rock walls that I've seen on different people's videos from New England. Uh, where from colonial times they yeah. would build walls to divide properties so it's really neat to see something like this down here and look at we're going downhill now as if building it on the flat part of the hill wasn't enough work it's going it's downhill it really is amazing Look behind you, Robert. And more wall down there. So this wall kind of ends right here and look how it snakes up the side there. That's cool. And then there's more. I think some of these places where there's no wall was probably split rail. See, that, that wall continues on down here. Yeah, the, the foundation of it, it does. Oh man, Dan, look at the, it's just going down the side of the hill. <laughs> so it continues all the way down to that branch. Yeah. Wow. What about over there on the other side? Is it, I don't think it continues on over there, does it? it yeah. It continues on look down there. <laughs> does it? Sure does. Hmm. You didn't go down there, Dan? I hate not to, but you can film it and I'll, I'll watch the video. <laughs> so Briley and I are gonna go down and check the bottom, <laughs> check the bottom out down here, more of the wall. Briley might take the quick path.
down though it looks like this gets steep oh no the camera does not do justice to how steep this gets and people were up here building this wall which is just incredible is it I, I wish you guys could see how steep it is because my feet keep sliding out from under me maybe that is a good example here The wall continues to come down the steep, steep side here, which looks like it's almost straight up. Then it came across here and it continues on the other side of this creek. And then this is kind of a, a bottom right here and the wall has gone that way. So we get across the creek. Beautiful little mountain creek here. So there's the wall on this side. And you can see Dan and Kyle up there on top of the hill. Wall continues this way. The amount of labor that it took to build this is just is incredible to think about. And more than likely built with slave labor. And now it seems like the rock is kind of petered out a little bit, but. I don't see any more down here. But this is beautiful bottomlands here. With this creek running between it. And these two hillsides. So we're back down in the bottom here. You can see Dan and Kyle up there. Dan was just waving. And you see the rock wall goes down on the side of the hill right here that we followed down. Then it appeared to stop at this branch. We followed it a little bit back that way until it petered out. But Briley and I just walked down here, down in this creek a little bit further. And the rock wall starts again right here. On this side of the creek now though, And it continues on down and how these were intricately stacked to form another wall on this side. I don't see anything else in the woods through there. Of course, if this land was ever timbered, something could have gotten disturbed and it appears to end again right there. So definitely something, something big was going on right here for all of that to have taken place here. The walls, the houses, the ruins of the houses that we've seen. And most likely this is all slave built, dates back to the plantation days. Then of course this land was later owned by a former slave that used to work on this very land, Mr. Oliver Stanley. So the stories that are in this 
in this mountain here are absolutely incredible. And to see the little bit that's left is just uh, is really amazing. And just sets the mind to wonder about how, how it must have looked back then. And think about all the people who also worked it back then on these steep, steep hillsides. That was a big one right there. This is a long, long rock wall. I think one thing that's interesting to note about this wall too is that it's very uh, utilitarian compared to some of the other walls that we've seen, like cemetery walls, usually more sharper edges, flat sides. Whereas this one, Looks more utilitarian, you know. The rocks were stacked as they fit. And they were stacked well, because even though you look at a rock wall like this and think it's very primitive, it took some expertise to stack all of these rocks just like this to be a specific width. Now, like I said, there's other cemetery walls that we've seen that are, you know, smooth sides and this one doesn't have that but it's amazing really to see this and wonder how long did this take to build how many people were involved with building it of course you know no doubt slave built but you know it's it's just it's amazing Well, it is everything that I expected that it would be, and more. Yeah. I had no idea that it would be as long as it is. It's, uh, what, 300 yards? It's long. I don't it, know. It's we, at least. I Kyle, what do you think? Estimate. 300 yards? At least, at least three, 400 yards. Three or 400 yards. It just goes on and on, all the way down to that branch. It's amazing. It's amazing that, that, uh, that it was it was built when it was built i mean they had no equipment other than their hands they had mules and sleds mules and pans but still that's a lot of work lifting each rock and putting it in place we don't know what year it was built we know that this was originally the dowdle plantation so it was possibly built by Dowdle and uh, Stanley slaves. Uh, but all we know is that the Stanley family wound up purchasing this after emancipation. And it was known, and you know, to pe people later on, it was handed down through the years that this was the Stanley hog farm. So, and we're able to look into the records of the courthouse and know that Mr. Stanley was very prosperous and that uh, he, he, 
he was a hard working man and all of his family was hard working and they made do with what they had. It's really something. I wish everyone in Harris County could see this, but it's just, it's a once in a lifetime thing. I doubt that I'll ever get a chance to see it again because it was a long way up here. And again, I want to thank Kyle Shaw for bringing us. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed seeing this today and hearing the, uh, the amazing story of Oliver Stanley seeing this incredible wall. I've never seen anything like this before here in, uh, here in Harris County, and it's amazing. Uh, it's just, I don't know how to describe it other than that. It's incredible to see. And again, big shout out to Kyle for bringing us up here, giving us the tour, driving us deep into the backwoods here. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.